Greetings everyone. I hope you're keeping safe and you're doing well. Please stay at home if possible. Make sure that you keep social distance and also keep the hygiene measures that you've been given. And hopefully as we try to fight this COVID-19 situation, things will be better in the near future. Welcome to this class. And I just want us to pick up from where we left. Last time before the COVID-19 situation, we had looked at several aspects of children in terms of therapy. We had looked at, we had looked at uh, the overview, understanding a child, looking at the difference between a child and an adult in terms of therapy, some of the things that makes children different and the, that will determine how we offer our therapies to children. We also looked at how to assess a child we looked at various aspects of assessment so that when you are now understand who a child is, understand what makes them different from adults and why their therapy is different from that of adults, then you will do a very good assessment. And we looked at the clinical intake of a child and we went through various aspects, including the bio data, including the history, the, the, the presenting problem history, including the, the developmental history, family history, medical history, um, sexual history, interpersonal history, social history, and even drug history and the mental state examination. We looked at all those aspects and I believe that you go back and rewind them and read through each of them. And today we now, now that we have that part was for understanding children, it's important now to look at some of the techniques that are used in helping children and basically the first technique that I want to look at is the art therapy in children. This is an overview. This is a very uh, special technical uh, therapy that require more sessions, but because of the time that we have at the moment, I'll just give you an overview of what you have in art therapy. Again, I'll be posting more videos on now on the, on the, in terms of broadness of how we utilize this art therapy in children. Welcome. Now, art therapy is a therapy that is used in diagnosing children as well as rehabilitating them. And therefore, when children use techniques such as drawing or paint, we are able to diagnose some of the situations or some of the problems that children are actually uh, enduring or having. It could be in photography, it could be in dance, it could be in whatever they are doing, but mostly it's in the art form. And therefore, you as a clinician, given time, looking through these drawings over a given period of time, you can actually pick depression, you can pick uh, anxiety, you can pick panic, you can pick any form of the disorder that is presented in the child's uh, art work. It is an expressive therapy. And if you look at our course outline, we call them express expressive therapies. It's in a form of an expressive therapy, and therefore a child uses their own way of, of producing their inner problems that we may not be able to see in terms of how physically they are feeling, how mentally they are feeling, emotionally, and all other aspects of their life, even cognitively. And therefore, when they bring them through this art, we are able to even diagnose them. We just don't diagnose them on the first day, but over a period of time, and we're gonna look at this. Now, it is a good mode of therapy because we said, one, it's important in diagnosis. So it really helps you in diagnosis. But again, it's a treatment strategy in itself. It's a rehabilitative. It helps the children treat. They deal with these feelings as they draw, as they enjoy, as they paint. These feelings are actually expressed and this part of the healing process. So when this happens, a child is now able to be aware of themselves. It increases their self-awareness. And they're able even to relay information about how they feel as we walk with them through these drawings, asking them who this person is, what the person is saying, what the person is doing. And as we get this information from them, because we, when we're looking at adult and child therapy, the differences and why a child and an adult is different, we said that most of them will not be able to express how they feel, how they think, just by asking them questions. The normal clinical intake for an adult will ask that. But for these children, once they draw, it is now easy for me as a clinician or easy for you as a clinician to be able now to relate with the child together as he ex expresses or she expresses how this means to whatever they've drawn or painted means to them. 
Art therapy can be used by any person who is competently trained in this form of therapy for children in the age of 5 to 12 years old and basically the ones who are actually having a psychological problems. Why 5 to 12? Because by age of 5, most children are able to draw. And they may not be, a 5-year-old child may not be able to draw as a 12-year-old child, but they're able to draw how they feel. They're able to present their, they're able to represent the world in, in, the, in the drawing. So basically, it's, it's a good form. And uh, as I say that whenever a child draws or paints, it represents their personal view of the world. It represents what is going through their mind. It represents the inner way of feeling about the world or interpreting the world around them. It is important because this therapy is important because it improves their a child's state of emotional uh, being and as well as the mental well-being. As I grow with, especially assuming my, I'm, I'm, I'm a child and I'm depressed, so as I draw and I'm, I'm, I'm drawing this with a lot of energy and aggressiveness in terms of paper, the space, I, I, you know, it's like my emotions are let go now at that point of time. So as I try to paint and use these colors that bring out depression, for example, it's, I'm dealing with it. So my emotional state and well-being is improved. It relieves my tension. Even when the paper is torn, it's part of it. Just like you can, you know, you feel like you want to punch someone when they really have done something wrong to you. So basically you feel that and you feel like you have relieved it. And remember, it's not just this. We will also be engaging the child in these drawings. They will be telling us what they are drawing, what they are painting and that. And for that matter, they are actually expressing their way of, of feeling and this relieves tension. Also helps in self-discovery. Oh, as now after they have drawn, they are painted and now we are engaging them in this talk and letting them to take to us through their drawings and how they feel, they realize, oh, wow, so I can actually express my feelings. Oh, so I can actually understand how I'm feeling. And this increases their self-awareness and they're able to lay up information about how they're feeling, their inner, and their, how they're feeling about the outside world. So as a therapist, when you work with a child who is, who, whom you're using art therapy with, we are saying that the therapist can work with all ages. Art therapy doesn't choose age, as long as there are children within the age we've defined. And, and even older than that, but most important is that this is, is specifically for children. And of course, it, therapists can use this mode of therapy to help even couples, families, or group of children who don't even know that this is actually what was going through. There are times have a child has drawn and, and, and out of the drawings, after engaging with the child, they've taken me through their drawings. The child really reveals so much on how they feel. And, you, and, 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 and out of this, the family and other people are able to understand. Also, whenever you're using this therapy, it's important to also always create rapport with a child. I, I, know, I know we have different personalities, but as soon as you choose this profession, one thing you need to work on is how to be creating rapport with, 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 with clients and specifically for this matter children. So it's, it's the warmth you give, the respect you give to a child. It is the genuine love and warmth that you show the child that they feel they are in the right person's arms and they feel that you are actually coming the life the, the right time. So you, you, you don't give condition to children. You don't give condition. You accept them the way they are. This is a very important aspect because some of us look at children, say a child is abusing drugs, a child is having a problem, it is in there, and it's becoming judgmental. It is not fair to a child. It's unprofessional, it's unethical. Using this therapy, expect you to have enough materials for the children to use. So don't come to therapy uh, and just empty handed for a child. Remember, it's gonna be difficult for a child to be able to to, to engage you if you don't provide materials for them to express how they feel. And now from there, they can walk us through how they're feeling. Some of the materials that we use in therapy, in, you know, we use a white paint paper, specifically F4 size, have enough crayons and paints, 12 in color, at least a watch to time, the watch is yours. The paper is for the child, the crayon is for the child, a magnifying glass just for you in case it is, you're unable to see what the child has drawn. A ruler for you so that you can look at the angles in which the child has presented. A pencil, it's missing there, but a pencil is important. HB pencil will be perfect. So 
so that you can be able, the child can be able to use it. Don't use an eraser. Don't give a, a pencil with an eraser because then they erase the, 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 the reflection of their unconscious mind. So it is important not to have an eraser. And when they ask you for it, sometimes you just want to let them know it's okay. Whatever they have drawn, it's fine. And of course, it's interesting. Once you start even engaging the child in what they wanted to erase, they will not even speak about it. Sometimes they're erasing because they feel, wow, this might just be something. I don't want to remember it. Sometimes they just want to block it. But because we don't want to provide a razor, just because we don't want them to block it, we want to engage the child. Child children are very good in terms of treatment once you create good rapport and you're able to work with them. So when you're starting art therapy, what do you do know? Always remember children, it's important if there's a possibility of, 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 of a guardian, let them come with the guardian if they are there or a parent or whatever, somebody they are relating up well with, because some of them could just be anxious being with you alone. We said earlier, make sure that you've taken the right, the clinical intake is exhaustive. So you've gotten all the information you want all the way from the bio data, all the information from the presenting problem history, all the information regarding the family history, developmental history, uh, you, you know, uh, anything to do with milestones, social history, amongst other histories that we've always talked about. So it's very important that you ensure you have a thorough, you do or you uh, have a good clinical intake so that when you have this information, it, you know, it's always good that Whatever that, whatever that you're doing or testing on a child should, should present exactly what the clinical intake has been of this kind of, of the child. Now, we've already said that you create a rapport with a child. This is key. And it's, and it's not just a child. In therapy, it's always good to create rap, uh, rapport. Once you've created rapport, some of the things that we ask the children to draw are what are listed here. You ask the child to draw a person. They'll ask you what person. Just say, draw a person of your own choice. Remember you to prepare them for this, letting them know that they'll draw how they feel like drawing and how they want to present the people they want to draw. And then it's up to them to draw anybody they want to draw. So it's not really, they can draw any object and whatever they want. Ask them to draw themselves on a plain paper, remember? Ask them to draw their family. They could draw their schools and friends and they could draw anything they like. Some others will go like now we have the person, house and tree form. We just draw the person, you draw a house and tree. And that's still an art therapy and another form of art therapy. But they just wanted to bring the one of drawing a person, drawing yourself, drawing your family, drawing your environment in school and drawing uh, anything you like. Now, after they draw, as they draw, it's your responsibility to be observing how the child is drawing. The child could even be having emotions. You just want to go and hold the child and say, I'm sorry for what you're going through. It must be very painful. It's always good. They could even be drawing and crying. They could be drawing. So you want to give a, a paper towel for the child to wipe away the tears. They could be drawing and they're feeling like they really want to get through this situation. A, the, a good example would be how would you treat an adult who's telling you this situation is so terrible. I feel so hurt. How would you feel? That's exactly how you need to approach a child. As they draw with the pain and anger and you can see it as they draw, it will just be good to be near the child and they give them a pat on the back and just see, it will be, you know, tell them, you, you could even stop and from them drawing, just want to know how they are feeling so that you exp they can express their feeling. It's always good because it's a part of empathy because you are the profession. You can see what the child is, draw is drawing. You can see how they're expressing their emotions from your own incognito observation. You could just move and also be there for the child emotionally so that the child can feel, uh, you know, you understand and you empathize with them. Secondly, uh, make sure that each of these drawings is drawn on the separate paper. So if the first paper is a person and then the child finishes drawing, then they can now give them uh, uh, their paint, the paints they can now paint their drawing, then give them the next drawing again, they finish and then they do the shading or the painting. Next drawing in a different paper, on a different paper, let them paint, let them shed, and then move on to the next until they exhaust. Now, the point is here, being emotionally present. Very, very important. Being emotionally present. Because when you are emotionally present, you will observe so many things that the child is going through, and you are able to take care of them, able to empathize, and able to 
to feel with the child as they do this. So it's important that you be there. After the child has drawn this, maybe for three sessions or so, and not in one sitting, of course, not in one sitting as a professional, you know this, um, during this session, the next session, the next session, we can now put all this together and see the relevance of these uh, drawings. So this is what we are calling analysis. And analysis is like a funnel technique. In the sense that we, we want to start from the wider base as we narrow down. So the first step is observe the overall appearance of the drawing. What was the choice of the color? What was the dominating color? How was the space occupied? Very important. Then the second step is you look at the in internal structure. And this is very critical because you want to look at how were the objects placed. For example, how was the, where was the father placed, the mother placed, how close was each other or far apart from each other, and the size. They are very important because each of these implies something from a psychological perspective. Then this, in the second step, you also want to look at the posture and stance. And here you want to see, has a child included themselves in these portraits? And how prominent are they in these portraits? Remember your child is your client. And the main focus in all this is also your child who is your client. Then you want to examine the way the drawing has been made. For example, does it have straight lines? Does it have angles? How smooth are the curves? How is the shading? What colors? Any omissions, any pressure? Like when they're drawing, people who are depressed will put a lot of pressure in their drawing. Omissions will be more in people who have anxieties. And then the use of colors, for example, purple and dark in people who have uh, quite a high traumatic or depression or severe mental illnesses, you know, straight lines, you know, could show a lot of anger and etc. the angles. So each of them has a meaning. As, and as I said, we'll be expounding this in more detail in other, uh, uh, other, other videos. So you want to follow up so that you have this. But because it's just an overview, we want just to bring to you some of the things that are very key when you're doing your analysis so that you can make up uh, uh, the correct diagnostic impression of your client. Then the third step, you want to consider some final details. For example, how much time did the child take to draw? Did they have a trouble in, in, in the drawing uh, in terms of some of the, and that's why you must be observing. Don't be distracted by anything. Do the eyes of the pupils, eye rushes and eyebrows, you want to check on their drawings. Do they, are they this there? Of course, remember again, age is different. A five-year-old child and a 12-year-old child are going to be different. You want to look if the lips were formed with care or just straight line, children who are anxious, who are angry, will not form them, they will not be, they will, they will not be formed with care, just be straight line and they want to move away. Insights, you want to look at the people in the picture. You want to know from the child, what is the, you ask the child, what are the people in the picture doing? Every person that has been drawing, what are the people in the picture doing? What are they saying? What are they saying next? And what are they going to do next? So you want just to hear the, th the stories and the themes that are coming from these drawings. And here you, the, you also want to assess the emotions of the child in these pictures because it brings out clearly when you ask them these questions. Then, in terms of once you've gone through these steps, what are some of the things that reveal are revealed out of the drawings that children have drawn? Now, number one is anxiety. It will be depicted by omissions, distortions, heavy lines, turned down mouth, raised arms, and arms turned in. You want to observe for these things. Life crisis. Will be depicted by absence of a lot of absence of omissions in the drawing, like arms in the human figure. Sometimes the use of colors, like the black color that I'm using here, etc. Depression, again, very little space used on the paper. Pressure put on drawings, greater constriction, disorganized drawings, and omissions as well. Emotions, the, 
they can be depicted by the color of choice. For example, you know, red and anger, etc. The use of sharp angles, straight lines instead of set curves. Then friendship. Lack of detail, use of more angles than curves. Disorganization could mean probably poor friendships, like the ones in school. The picture could be a good one, the one that she draws from the school ones. Then, of course, family portraits. You can tell who is dominant in the family by the size of the, the drawing. It could be you know, the small baby is actually the biggest in the whole family. That tells you they're dominant in the family. The posture. And then the positioning, even sibling rivalry, like who places themselves in the middle between the mother and the father, or nearest to the parents, and then like that. You can actually tell. Omission and space, color, etc., will depict how each child relates with the family member. So these are just some of the way you actually try to analyze. So why art therapy? Because one, it reduces stress and fear. And of course, help the child with the painful issues. It also helps the child to communicate what they've been feeling and nobody has been there for them. It also helps them to resolve their inner issues that they have been going through. It also helps them to, to manage their behavior, improve insight for parents and therapists, and of course, develop some skills, you know, stress, coping skills, uh, communication skills among each other. For example, a child with cancer may be asked to draw an image of himself with cancer. Of course, not saying with cancer, but just an image of himself. And then turn in expressing the feelings about it. And therefore, when they draw now, they bring it. So just say, draw yourself, and then it will come in. Art therapy is used to treat children who are suffering from emotional and physical problems. It can also be used during medical procedures when the child is actually going through a medical procedure to alleviate the anxiety and etc. They can draw about what they are feeling or their fears about what they are going to go through. It also can be used in children who have gone through any trauma, sexual abuse, physical abuse amongst others. And of course, even children with disability, this will be a best way to help them express themselves in terms of their, how they are feeling. So basically, uh, it is a good mode of helping diagnosing and rehabilitating children with um, psychological problems, so in, including autism. So in conclusion, art therapy is a very good mode of therapy. The results are very reliable. Children enjoy drawing and therefore they will love it. And as much as they express their feelings, it really makes them feel good. It, it also helps the child feel that whatever they have gone through is now being able to resolve or speak out and can help a range of many other children in many, many, many problems, with many problems such as children with disability, those going through medical procedures, those with autism and other developmental disorders, neurodevelopmental disorders amongst others. So it is a choice. But as I want to conclude, I want to emphasize that this doesn't really give you um, a nod that you are a, an art therapist. This is a therapy that requires you to also go through now what you've done. This is just an overview. Now we want to go to the details of each of what you've discussed deeper and deeper and inner so that we can now have insight on how to help children. So I hope this has given you a picture of how a therapy looks like, but I would like us to proceed on now going deeper into this. And for those who are doing undergraduate program, it would be a good thing to enroll probably for a master's program or train this separately so that you can understand deeply what art therapy is all about. Thank you for coming. In case of any question, please ask me at the YouTube, just at the end of the, uh, the, 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 the session of the YouTube, I'll be able to answer. If not, and you have my contact, you're free to actually contact me and ask me. And if you want more of this art therapy and you'd like to learn more about art therapy, please keep in contact. I can be able to refer you. Thank you.